Albright going to show you that God condemns interracial marriage, the serious sin of miscegenation, of kindreds mixing with each other. I'm going to show you some scriptures that clearly condemn it and outline it. I'm going to show you some. Ezra chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. If you have a Bible, turn to Ezra chapter 9, verses 1 to 2. It says, Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Prezerites, the Jezebites, Jebusites, whatever, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites, for they have taken of of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands, yea, the land of the princes and rulers hath been chief, chief in this trespass. So God says that, well, I'm talking to Ezra, but the inspired word of God, the King James Bible, says that when they're mingling themselves, the nation of Israel mingling themselves with the other kindred, it's a trespass. And, and they're confessing, Ezra is basically praying about miscegenation, intermarriage. It's a trespass. So God is not for miscegenation. Ezra chapter 10, verse 2 to 3 says, Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Sekaniah, the son of Jehiel, Jehiel, whatever, and one of the sons of Elam answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the Lamb, yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Strange wives? Huh. And he's saying they're confessing their sins. He's saying it's a, um, they have trespassed against God, taken strange wives. Very, very interesting. And you go down to verse 3. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble with the, at the commandment of our God. Let it be done according to the law. Hmm. So it's against the commandment of God to take strange wives. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 1 to 2. Chapter 9 verse 1 to 2. It says, now on the twenty and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and sad clothes and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confessed their sins and iniquities of their fathers. So it's an iniquity to mix with other kindreds. Interesting. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. It says, on that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that an Ammonite and a Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever, because they were not because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them that he should curse them. How big our God turned the curse into a blessing. Now it came to pass that when ye have heard the law, they separated Israel, or separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. Hmm. My cat's goofing around down there. But see, they're separating themselves from the mixed multitude. So how can you say that God is for miscegenation when they're having to separate themselves? Because God is dealing with a specific nation, the nation of Israel. So he didn't want them mixing with the other kindreds. It wasn't just a religion issue. I mean, that was there. God didn't want them worshiping the other false gods of the, of the uh, surrounding regions. But at the same time, he didn't want them mixing with the other kindreds because God was dealing with the specific nation. Now, of course, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, God is dealing with all kindreds. But during that time, and by the way, God is still not for miscegenation. Just because he's dealing with all kindreds and anyone can get saved, God is still against miscegenation. There are New Testament passages that still make a distinction between kindreds. So God is not for miscegenation. Just because it's the New Testament does not mean that God is for miscegenation. Okay? God still condemns it. And these scriptures prove it. But God was dealing with the nation of Israel. He did not want them mixing with the other kindreds. So I believe that miscegenation is outside of biblical marriage. Because God says that it's it's uh, basically, what well, doesn't say it verbatim, but he does does make it clear that only this two of the same kindred are to marry. My cat is in the background. But uh, yeah, miscegenation, I'd say, is a form of fornication and up there with, with sodomy as being pretty bad. So, and, and by the way, miscegenation was against the law in America for, and Canada for hundreds of years. It was actually two Jesuit lawyers that got it legalized in America. So... Yeah, miscegenation is condemned by God. It is wicked. It is sin, just like sodomy, just like fornication, just like adultery. It is sexual perversion. So don't be deceived by this pro-miscegenation agenda. God bless you. Goodbye.